So welcome once more to our weekly video briefing. We're trying to uh, provide you through this means with a, a sort of catch up on some of the big stories across the church family and some of the wider issues that we're um, wrestling with. Uh, are you getting used to the new normal? I'm not so sure I was that good at the old normal, but we are living in now what people call the new normal and much of what we're doing is online like, like this now. And right across the church, we're, we're discovering the benefits of online ministry. Um, in fact, uh, we've been so encouraged by the response of hundreds of people to the output uh, over the last uh, two weeks. We had 3,000 uh, views nearly for the service a week last Sunday, and 1,000 uh, people viewed it uh, uh, last Sunday morning. And, and, and folks are, are sending in their appreciations, and, and, and that's great, and, and we're grateful to the technical support team uh, backstage who, who make it possible. I've discovered myself the joys of YouTube uh, and subscriptions. So why don't you um, subscribe to the Lansdowne YouTube channel if you don't already. Just click the button and, and you'll see all the other platforms that we've got which are available to you. Things like SoundCloud, a podcast uh, program where you can hear the message in, 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 in audio format. And then there's uh, links to our Instagram and, and, and Facebook and, and, and Twitter accounts. It's just great to see how much uh, has been going on and now we can drive the traffic and, and attract other people too. So you might want to share these good things with neighbours and friends and, 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 and colleagues. People are uh, finding great benefit in, in, uh, in advising uh, non non church non Christian folks uh, about what we're able to offer. So what are what are some of the big stories? Well, let's begin with um, with some family news. Delighted to be able to share, if you don't know already, the the news that uh, Tom and Fee Davenport have had uh, a baby boy, Jude Benjamin. Uh, I wonder whether Tom and Fee are trying to, to to grow a football team eventually in the next few years. So. Uh, Great news, guys. It's wonderful um, to hear that. We hope God blesses you as a, as a family. Uh, then, in terms of the other sorts of things that are happening amongst us, we're increasingly getting used to this online stuff it, as a teaching vehicle, as a gathering point. There are folks setting up um, uh, all kinds of uh, Zoom events and, and online um, uh, opportunities. So the, the parents uh, have started a, a parents prayer group. You might want to find out more about that. Our life group that meets on a Monday uh, is now going by Zoom and on this last Monday they were joined from Mozambique by Jane Edwards, one of our mission partners. Isn't that wonderful how interconnected the world is? Uh, then there are uh, other ministries like the Lansdowne Kids Ministry that Angelina and others run. They're providing resources online um, for uh, our children. Uh, and our young people. So we are gearing up little by little to offer increasingly these sorts of resources and I hope that you can benefit from them and tell others uh, about them. The International Cafe restarts again on Friday and guess what? Um, by Zoom. Uh, so that's great and Naira will be driving that with her team and uh, you, can, you can pray about the, uh, the restart of the International's uh, uh, Hub Cafe. Uh, I, I learnt from, from Naira the other day that uh, she's been doing some creative uh, kitchen uh, Zoom, uh, making recipes with other people uh, in, in a video conference. And uh, that's been a, an interesting example of how we can use modern technology. Then there are people who are getting more involved with us as we um, connect with them through our uh, our, our online ministry. Uh, there are a number of people who are wanting to be uh, followed up and prayed for as a consequence of, of what they're seeing uh, amongst us. Uh, there's a, a new development with our food bank uh, program. We're going to be distributing food now on two occasions during the week, not just on one. We've become a, a, one of these hub centres in the, in the region for this kind of, uh, in this kind of program. On, on Monday, I was uh, actually sharing uh, with a video 
conference uh, and there were 17, 18 of us and these were leaders uh, both of churches and of Christian agencies and, and, and mission movements in the, in the area. I, I meet once a, once a month normally with these people but uh, we up, up that now to once a week. It was great to see on the screen Colin Mitchell with his Evangelical Alliance hat on and also on the screen Liz Carter who uh, heads up the Lilly Project working with vulnerable uh, women. And we were sharing together across the perspectives of, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 different churches and agencies, what God's doing and, and the doors that God is opening. You might want to be uh, aware of, of these gatherings. I mean, we ourselves as a local church are providing a coordination point for several other churches in the area. And Tom and, and Doug are, are heading that up. Uh, there's also a growing uh, awareness of the need to support people who are experiencing severe uh, and debilitating mental health challenges. I guess it's no surprise that in a context like this, uh, mental health is, is something that is at risk now in larger numbers. And so uh, this group that uh, I, I belong to is wondering about setting up a prayer line, a counselling line, and, and that, that kind of thing. Well, in terms of Lansdowne, um, apart from the, the wonderful news about uh, Fee and, and Tom and, and some of these ministries starting up, a couple of more things to share with you. Uh, J John Preston and uh, Trudy Tuffrey uh, are driving something called Lansdowne Church Help. It, it's, a, it's a basic uh, support system uh, for our own church family, uh, covering basic needs, maybe uh, shopping or essential uh, travel. Um, so if you or if you know anyone who might benefit from that ministry, tell them to contact the church office in the first place and, and John, Trudy and their team will, will, will get back to you. But we're trying to provide that sort of practical support at this time. In terms of events, let me say a little bit about upcoming events. Uh, we're going to go uh, to our prayer central this evening and that will be the first one we've ever done by Zoom. Uh, Doug sent us yesterday on email the sort of operational details of that but do be aware that we're gathering together to pray at 8.15. Don't forget that it's not the normal start time of 7.30 but 8.15 because at 8 o'clock there's going to be this national um, applause uh, moment for those involved in caring in our society. So after that, we'll be gathering in, in the Zoom uh, prayer meeting. I'm looking forward to seeing how that's gonna work. Um, but please uh, be aware of that and access it uh, as you are able to. Some of you will also be aware that we are planning the uh, funeral Thanksgiving service for Kerry Brown. That'll be uh, live streamed next Tuesday um, within the government guidelines um, from our Woodbury Avenue site. So I'm sure we want to be praying for the family. There'll only be 10 of them allowed as mourners, both at the crematorium and at the actual um, church service. But through the online church ministry, we'll be able to reach uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of others who would love to have been uh, at Kerry's Thanksgiving service. Will you pray for that, that God will use that to speak to people, especially perhaps people within Kerry's generation, her friends, and there are many, many of those. So that's next Tuesday at four o'clock uh, live stream. And then just heads up for Good Friday. Um, that, of course, is, is a week uh, tomorrow. Would you believe it? We're hoping to share communion together again online. And so just be aware of that and, and have your schlur and your, and your loaf of bread ready or whatever. Um, we, we want to try and uh, gather together in that act of, of, of worship as uh, we, we, we sing and pray and reflect on God's word and uh, remember the Lord Jesus and his death uh, for us. And then two days later, three days later, uh, on the Sunday, we're, we're going to be having our uh, Easter uh, Sunday 10.30 uh, online service as we will be this Sunday, Palm Sunday again 10.30 and hopefully by now you're into the new normal and the new routines and you can join us uh, for that well let me uh, wrap up 
with just a, a little word of encouragement from the scriptures. We, we've said that these briefings uh, will, will carry news from across the church family, uh, will carry some operational detail, but also a spiritual um, encouragement to finish. This from Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Hope is a very distinctive Christian quality. It's not hope that it might be better tomorrow, it's hope in the God of tomorrow, in the God of today, the God of all hope. The God of hope, says Paul, who is... That's the kind of tense there. The God of hope will be filling you with all joy and peace. I, I filled up my, my car, uh, what, two weeks ago. I don't think I'll be filling it up again for several more weeks. I'm walking everywhere. But God continues to fill us up as believers in the Lord Jesus with joy and peace as we believe into the container of our lives. God pours by the power of the Holy Spirit, says Paul, God pours his joy and his peace into us. And that's why God's hope in us is being topped up. Because we go to God often, we're empty and, and worn down. And boy, this is tiring. Boy, this isolation can be difficult. Boy, we feel disconnected. But the God of hope is filling us up. Every day as we come to him, believing, he's filling us up with joy and peace in the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of that so that the cycle of hope may be complete. All of that so that we may abound in hope. So the God of hope fills us with joy and peace as we believe so that we might abound in hope. You see the, the circle or the cycle, the recycling plant of God's hope? Maybe you, you start a day feeling pretty empty and you come to God and ask him to fill you again with joy and peace in believing. And through the day, you get knocked, you have difficulties and, and issues and pressures and you've got family members who, who are struggling with, uh, with all the stuff that everyone is right now. And, and you ask God, please fill me again with joy and peace through your Holy Spirit. And you come to the end of the day, you come back to the God of all hope that you might abound in hope. I think that's something we should be praying for each other because this is a long haul. We have a long way to go yet. And uh, we've got weeks more of this loving each other and serving each other and praying for each other. And at the heart of that is this experience of the God of hope who pours into us as we believe in him joy and peace so that we might continue to abound in hope. Well, may God bless us this uh, coming uh, weekend with his presence and through all the ministries of Lansdowne. May our small groups reach out in care to those who belong to them. May we be aware of the vulnerable that maybe are not within the, the, the heart of our church family. Let's be looking out for each other. It is one of the ironies, isn't it, of this world that we're living in that... Um, Although we're, we're actually socially distant from each other, we are being connected, linked through this mechanism. Well, let's pray that God will keep us linked to him. He's the God of hope. And may he fill you with joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you might abound in his hope. God bless you.